All right, so there are very many different types of flasks that are used in the chemistry lab. Um, we're going to be making solutions a little bit, and one of the flasks that we're going to talk about today is used for making solutions. Perhaps the most common flask that's used in the lab is the Erlenmeyer flask. It has this classic cone shape, conical shape. In fact, it's sometimes called a conical flask or a titration flask. We use a particular lab in grade 12 chemistry. So it, it's got calibrations for measuring different volumes, but like beakers, the volumes are not accurate measurements. These are very rough estimates of the, of the volume in the flask. So you would never use this flask to measure something accurately. A second type of flask that's less common, but you'll still see it once in a while, it's called a Florence flask. This is a 500 mil Florence flask. It has a round base with a flat bottom, so it can sit on a bench top like that. It has a tall neck like this. So it's sometimes used for boiling liquids. In fact, that's usually what it's used for with this round base. So it's sometimes also called a boiling flask. You can use both the Erlenmeyer flask and Florence flask often just to store liquids in as well. A third type of flask, very similar to the Florence flask, is the round bottom flask. It has the same sort of round base, but there's no flat bottom to it, so it can't sit on its, on its, on its own on the desktop, it'll fall over. It's designed to sit in a small heating mantle like that, and it can be heated in, in an organic chemistry experiment. So that's a round bottom flask. And that brings us to the last type of flask we're going to see today, the volumetric flask. And I've got several different sizes here in front of me. These flasks, volumetric, are the ones we use when we want to make a solution of a known concentration. These flasks are called volumetric because they measure volumes very, very accurately. In fact, each of these flasks is designed to measure just one volume. They come in a variety of sizes. Often in the lab, the lab assistant needs to make a large volume of a solution, so she might use a 2-liter or 2,000 milliliter volumetric flask. Um, sometimes we want to make a very small volume and we use a 50 milliliter volumetric flask. They come in a full range of sizes. They're, they've got this characteristic shape, sort of a teardrop shaped bottom with a flat base and a long narrow neck. On that neck there will be a little line, just one line that goes all around the neck. When the flask is filled, so the meniscus of the liquid inside is touching the bottom of the meniscus, touching that line, you have exactly the volume that's mentioned on the flask. So in this case, 250.0 or 250 plus or minus 0.24 milliliters for this particular flask, um, that would be the volume if it was filled right to that line there. So that's the volumetric flask, characteristic shape, tall, round base with a long neck like that. The volumetric flask is the one that we would use to make solutions of known concentration. So let's now prepare a solution. We're going to make 250.0 milliliters of 0.200 molarity nickel-2 sulfate. We're going to use solid nickel-2 sulfate hexahydrate as our solute, and we'll dissolve it in aqueous solution with water as the solvent. Pause the video and calculate what mass of nickel-2 sulfate hexahydrate we'll need. There's more than one way to do the calculation. Here I'm using three unit multipliers. I begin with the volume of our solution, 250.0 milliliters, and first I convert that to liters. Then I use the concentration, the molarity of our solution, which was 0.200 moles per liter. That's moles of nickel-2 sulfate hexahydrate. In the third unit multiplier, I convert it to grams of nickel-2 sulfate hexahydrate using its molar mass. Be sure to include the six water molecules in the molar mass. My answer is 13.1 grams of nickel-2 sulfate hexahydrate. You could also use two formulas. You could use C equals N over V to find the moles of solute, and then moles equals mass over molar mass to find the mass. Be sure that you keep three significant digits in your answer. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare the solution um, of nickel sulfate. We're going to make a 250 milliliter solution of 0.200 molarity nickel sulfate. 
So I've got my 250 milliliter volumetric flask ready. I've got some distilled water, which will be the solvent in this, in this solution. It's gonna be an aqueous solution. And our solute is nickel 2 sulfate hexahydrate, a green colored salt. Um, and we're gonna be weighing that out in just a minute. So we've calculated that to make the 250 mils of 0 0.200 molarity nickel 2 sulfate, we need 13.1 grams of the solute. So we have an electronic balance and let's weigh out the solute. So I'm gonna put the weighing boat on the balance and I'm gonna zero the balance so it ignores the mass of the weighing boat and shows zero. Now this is a milligram balance, so it goes to three decimal places. To prepare our solution with 0 0.200 molarity, that's got three significant digits, and we're gonna use 13.1 grams. So the two digits after the first decimal place, I'm not really that interested in. We just have to be 13.1 um, and anything very close to that. So let's hold the bottle of solute directly over the balance as we add the chemical. 13.1 grams is gonna be a pretty large amount. So let's just put some large scoops in here. There's nine, 10.5, we should be pretty close. We want 13.1, we're at 12.7 right now if we round that off. So let's slow down the addition. 13.1, there's 12.9, so we're close. 12.9, and there's 13.0, 13.0, got a little bit more. 13.1 is what we're aiming at. And that would be good, 13.08, when I round that off to one decimal is 13.1, so I don't need to take any more time weighing it out. So there is the 13.1 grams of nickel 2 sulfate. Next, what we'll do is we're gonna transfer the solute to our empty volumetric flask. So we'll take the stopper off. I'll make a weighing boat here and I'm going to transfer this quantitatively so don't spill any of the solute as you're adding it. You just weigh it out very carefully. Now the weighing boat is designed to prevent solute from sticking but because of the static electricity a little bit of the nickel sulfate is stuck in the weighing boat. So I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water. Water is our solvent in this experiment. So we're going to add that water and see if we can transfer the last little bit of nickel sulfate to the flask. And that almost worked, but there's now some green colored liquid in here. So I'll do that maybe once or twice more. I wanna get all of that nickel sulfate that we just weighed into the volumetric flask. And I think I'm gonna do it one more time. One more little washing. All right. There's a little tiny bit of nickel sulfate there, but I think I'm gonna ignore that for the sake of this video. So I've transferred the solid first to the empty flask, added a bit, few washings of, of distilled water, and now I'm gonna fill the flask with some more distilled water until it's about one third full. Do not, at, do not fill it up at this point. So you want it to be about one third, one quarter, one half, somewhere in that range. Stopper with your glass stopper, put your thumb on the stopper. Now you want to swirl the flask in this circular motion to dissolve all of your solute. Notice as I'm shaking that I'm not getting any of the solution up into the neck of the flask. It's all staying down here in the bottom of the flask. You try to avoid getting the solution up into the neck. Now, if you see any of the salt crystals in the neck of the flask, maybe they didn't all go down inside, you'd want to wash that down with distilled water also. So you're going to keep shaking until the salt is completely dissolved. That may take a few minutes. Usually, if the salt is pretty soluble, you don't need to add any more distilled water. One third to one half full should be enough to dissolve all of the salt. The reason we don't fill it up fully at this point is because if we had filled it, we wouldn't be able to get the kind of agitation you see here. Because it's only one third full, as I shake it, 
It's got lots of agitation inside the flask, which helps dissolve the salt more quickly. If it were full completely, it would be very hard to shake it to dissolve it. So I've just been shaking. I'm looking at the bottom. There's a tiny little bit of solid salt still there. So I'm just going to keep shaking for another moment or so until it's completely dissolved. So once you're convinced that there's no solid salt left, then you can move on to the next step. So take your stopper out of the flask. It should still be dry because we didn't get anything up into the neck. And now add more distilled water. But this time you want to add the distilled water until you are just below the neck, the line on the neck of the volumetric flask. Remember, the volumetric flask has one line on it to mark the volume, and that's up here on the neck. If you fill it up to that point, you're going to have 250 milliliters of, of solution. So I'm going to fill it up to just below that line with distilled water. Don't use tap water. Tap water contains other things dissolved in it besides water. Put a little bit more water in the beaker. And then keep pouring. You want to get the water just below the line on the neck. There we go. I'm about one centimeter below. I could even go a little bit more. Next, take a plastic pipette and suck up some of that distilled water from your beaker and hold the flask at eye level. So be sure you're looking at eye level. So you can see the meniscus, the curved surface of liquid in the flask. You'd like the bottom of the meniscus to be touching that line on the neck of the flask. So drop by drop, there you go. The bottom of the meniscus, looking at eye level, is perfectly touching the line on the neck of the flask. You're almost finished. We just added a bunch of distilled water, so the solution at the top is very dilute. The solution at the bottom is more concentrated. So technically, this is more of a mixture than a solution. So we want to stopper it, put your thumb on top, turn it upside down to get an air bubble up here, shake it vigorously, invert it, take the stopper off to just let it breathe. Be careful you don't lose any of the solution. And repeat that process two or three times, three or four times to mix the solution. So we first dissolved the solute. Now we're mixing the solution to make sure that it's homogeneous. All right, I think I'm done. One last little breathing and we're finished. So we now have 250 milliliters of 0.200 molarity nickel-2 sulfate.